Hello, everybody. This is um, Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. This is a quick update, I guess, a part two of how will Satan do it. Now, I was going to mention something and then I forgot about it. But the, um, the beast system that's coming to the world can do weather manipulation. Oh, yeah, they sure can. There is a thing called harp, and there's even a book called Angels Do Not Play This Harp, and it's spelled H-A-A-R-P. You could look it up. Some people say it's Tesla, Nikolai Tesla technology. Others say it's fallen angels technology, which, you know, either way wouldn't surprise me. But the... Um, Supposedly, the Russians have one, and there's one, it's in Alaska. Now, I found out about this in the 90s when Bill Clinton was president. And the thing was, is the government military was asking for money for a project for weather manipulation. So, you know, to cause droughts or floods or whatever I you know what they do is they project radiation up into the upper atmosphere and like a beam they can direct where it goes and the uh, the thing is you know for years the government denied that it existed but I used to have a uh, newspaper called The Spotlight. And they they weren't Christian, but they exposed a lot of the, the stuff going on in the government. The Bilderbergs and what have you. And they had some really good sources. And they were big into the natural healing stuff. And eventually the government sicked the IRS on the people. And um, just like they did with Kent Hovind and, you know, put some of them in prison over tax stuff and uh, they eventually you know they they own the Federal Reserve Bank which basically is controls our money supply I mean when they want to buy a radio station they just print you know a couple hundred million dollars and boom they just buy it you know well that's what they did they bought up all the paper companies and the spotlight couldn't buy paper anymore you know, to print their newspapers because they were like, we're not going to sell you any paper, you know? So that's how it works. I mean, they bought NBC, they bought ABC, they bought CBS, they bought CNN, they bought Turner Broadcasting Network. Of course, they own the 700 Club and the, uh, the Beals Above channel, TBN. So, but uh, I, had a, I had this newspaper on the desk at a hotel. I was a manager of a hotel in Denver. And most people wouldn't read it. You know, in the 90s, everybody's like, eh, conspiracy stuff. You guys are full of it. But, uh, you know, the military had asked for Congress for money for a project of this nature. And, you know, if you knew where to look, you could find it. But one day a pilot, and this hotel was near the airport, and a pilot came in. And he saw the newspaper, and we started talking about harp and stuff. And uh, he had his flight bag. You know, they got a bag for clothes, and then he's got his flight bag, the stuff that he needs for, for piloting. And he showed me a map by the FAA, you know, the Federal Aviation Administration. They put out a map. And they update it every so often. I don't know exactly how often. I've never, I've seen it one time. But the deal was, the maps show no fly zones. Military bases, you're not allowed to fly over. Military bases, you're not allowed to fly over the White House. You're in, uh, as of Trump becoming president, you're not allowed to fly over Mar-a-Lago, his house in Palm Beach. But he showed me this area in uh, Alaska. It's out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you know. 
And he says, no fly zone. And he told me the pilots and the airlines were avoiding this area like the plague. He says, we could tell when this thing was running because our airline, uh, the airplane instruments would go screwy. And um, it's like basically shooting microwaves up into the upper atmosphere and heating up the area. I don't know exactly how it works. I've never been invited. I didn't take physics in college. I just know that you know, this guy's telling me this stuff. And he's not full of crap. I mean, you know, here it is. This guy's a pilot. He's got all his piloting stuff in his bag. And he shows me the FAA map. And, you know, you know, people, he, he had no reason to lie to me. I mean, you know. But he told me, yeah, the airline instruments would go screwy when we're flying in this area. Uh, and, and you're not allowed to fly over it. And he, and he also said that there was a railroad line going out to this big, monstrous area that's blacked out that's in the no-fly zone. And I've looked it up on Google Maps since, you know, this was in the 90s, but years later I looked it up. And yeah, there's a rail line, but you can't look at the harp area with uh, the satellite view. It's blocked out. At least it was when I was looking at it. But if you go, you know, 100 miles away, you can see the rail line. There's no town. There's nothing. There's no town. But they've got their own uh, generators and, you know, what is this facility for? You know, and if you want to look up what HARP means, H-A-A-R-P, um, you can figure, you know, high aural audio, whatever, something or other. I forget what it is. I could have told you a couple years ago, but I guess I'm getting old and Alzheimer's setting in. But, um, you know, I, I'm i convinced that they can do a lot more in weather manipulation than, you know, they're not letting us know what it's for and what they can do. But just remember that they're going to be able to do, uh, the beast, when he comes, he's going to be able to do false miracles. So the deal is... Um, they're they're going to trick the majority of people. So let's take a look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 1. And this is one of the big reasons why these satanic, lying antichrists will want to convince you that Paul is a false apostle. And a lot of those people are hooked up with the Hebrew roots, Torah keeper people. So, and, uh, you know, I've already had YouTube delete two of my videos. So I must be getting pretty close to the truth. So, all right. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Well, we haven't been gathered together unto Jesus, so... He hasn't come yet, okay? That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Oh, and by the way, the, the preterists want you to think that all this has been fulfilled. Or that the only thing left to happen in the future in the book of Revelation is for Christ to come back. And I say that's a lie. And they'll tell you, oh, well, all this was written before 70 AD, and then when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD, that was fulfillment of Matthew 24 and the fulfillment of Revelation and the fulfillment of the coming of the Antichrist, you know, and they're just saying, well, you know, Jesus is going to come back. But I say they're liars or deceived, whichever the case may be. They might be, well, you could be deceived and be lying, or you could be a deceiver and be lying on purpose. But, um, I guarantee you the preterists are going to tell you that the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, they're going to proclaim that that is the true Christ when he's the false Christ. Okay? And pre-tribbers are deceived pretty much the same way, too. They, they think that they're going to fly out of here any second. And um, they're not going to see the beast or the tribulation, but the Bible says otherwise. So... 
Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathered, gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that's where we are today. When you got sodomites getting married, you know the falling away has happened. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the, that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. See, Paul calls the man of sin, the son of perdition, um, the Antichrist, the be John called him the beast. Um, you know, Christ cannot come back until the man of sin be is revealed. Okay? And the pre-tribbers teach, well, as soon as he's revealed, we fly away. Hmm. And that the man of sin re be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, preters have a problem with this verse. They claim that Roman general Titus, who destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD, proclaimed that he was God, and he sat in the temple of God. Well, the problem with that is, can you imagine a general proclaiming that he's God? What do you think the prime minister or the president of the country would, do you, do you think they would say something? Oh, wait a minute, you're claiming to be God and the absolute ruler of the world, uh, but you're only a general of the army, and we got a prime minister here in, oh, I don't know, England, or we got a president here in the United States. Don't you think they might say something? Um, say, mm, no, I don't think you're God, no. Well, that's what happened in the Roman army. Titus was a general in the army. Do you think the emperor of Rome would have had something to say about that? Oh, yeah. See, preters will never mention that to you. So, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So, you know, Roman general Titus couldn't have fulfilled this impossible. So what they try to do is tell you that this was written before the destruction of the temple, and I say it was written after, but, you know, but, uh, and they say the same thing about the book of uh, Revelation. But here's the deal. There's two Jewish groups that want to rebuild the temple. There's the Temple Mount Faithful and the Temple Institute. And they got everything ready. So, you know, they've infiltrated the seminaries with their vast sums of money long ago. And this is how it works, people. You get people, you can bribe them with millions of dollars. And if that doesn't work, you could either threaten to kill them and their families, or you can actually kill them and their families and get the next guy in line to take the bribe. You know, that's what the mafia would do. They'd hand you a wad of cash and say, hey, look, you're going to do this for us. And if you don't, we're going to kill you or your family. And, you know, what happens if the president of the Bible college dies because he won't compromise? Well, then the vice president takes over or they get somebody else. You know, so eventually they can take control if God allows it. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God <clears throat> or that is worship so that he is God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God and that's how they took control of the Bible colleges like Harvard and Yale for Bible colleges Princeton Bible colleges verse 5 remember ye not that when I was yet with you I told you these things 
And now you know that with what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he, he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Did General Titus come with all power and signs and lying wonders? No. So it couldn't have been. Preterism is wrong, people. It's, you know, Matthew 24, parts of it were fulfilled, but it wasn't completely fulfilled. Christ hasn't returned yet. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all, un, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see, God's going to deceive them. All right, let's go to John. In uh, his writing in the book of Revelation, chapter 13. Now, preterists have a real problem with this verse. They, you know, the thing is, preterists almost never, ever read or write from the book about the book of Revelation because it destroys their theology. You know, they can get away with Matthew 24, but they can't do anything with, with Revelation, the book of Revelation, because the Bible says that uh, the sea would turn red and all the fish would die and the ships would be destroyed. Ask them when that happened. They, they, you know, they can't, they can't show you anything. So they have to lie and explain it away and avoid it and hope you will never read your Bible. You know, oh, well, the book of Revelation, that, that, you know, that, that doesn't belong in the Bible. Just like Second Peter and Paul's writings, they don't belong in the Bible. They don't belong. That's what they'll tell you. All right, Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Well, when you read the book of Revelation, the Bible explains that the uh, sea and the waters is people. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Oh, and if you wonder about the, uh, the sand of the sea, well, you know, God promised Abraham his descendants would be like the, the sand, of, sand by the sea and, and the stars in the sky. And if you've ever been out in the middle of the desert where there's no lights, there's literally millions of stars. We don't, we can't, those of us that live in the cities can't see it, but, you know, they're there. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Isn't Christ called the lion of the tribe of Judah? You know, we're not talking about a physical mouth. He, he's going to talk like he's the king of king and lords of lords. Okay? And his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon, and the Bible tells you who the dragon is, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Hmm. 
and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And the question is, uh, well, the answer is, nobody that's on the earth. You know, I, I truly wonder if, if we're, you know, the United States is the military arm of the beast. I think we are. You know, after looking at all the uh, kosher advisors that uh, Trump has put in office, I don't think he's going to be, I don't think Hillary would have been any worse. I really don't. I think we've been had. I wish I was wrong, but I've watched too many elections. I've watched every election since the 70, 76. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Democrats, Republicans, two sides of the same coin. Heads they win, tails we lose every time. And uh, looking at the people Trump put in his cabinet and office, advisors, I think we're, I think he's going to, I think he's going to push the war and make the uh, world safe for the new temple. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemy, and power was given given unto him to continue 40 and two months. That's three and a half years, people. That is the time of the great tribulation. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Did General Titus do this? I don't think so. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship, worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have a hear, ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth, and them that dwell therein, to, wor to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And I believe this is the false prophet. And I believe he is, he's going to call himself Elijah. That's my opinion. Verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Now what's funny is when you read the book of Kings, Elijah the prophet did this. He brought fire down from the sky and devoured um, some soldiers. I did an hour and 45 minute study on Elijah the prophet. And I mentioned this in this too. But I think he's going to call himself Elijah. Claiming to be Elijah. It's going to be the false prophet though. He's going to be able to bring fire down from the sky. Now, the preterists will say, Oh, well, you know, they took catapults and, 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 and took you know, wood and put it in the catapult, lit it on fire, and then threw it over the walls of Jerusalem. Is that a miracle? No. 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 A miracle is when Elijah called fire down from the sky and burned up 50 soldiers and the captain. Read it. Read it in the book of Kings. If you, you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll probably be one of those people that are deceived. You better read the Bible. You better take your TV, at least turn it off. If you don't take it and unplug it and throw it in the garbage, because you're going to be deceived, people. I mean, they've got uh, Project Bluebeam. They can do holographic images in the sky. I mean, 
the beast is going to have all kinds of technological things to trick you. Technolo technological tricks. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on, on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And that's going to be, if I live long enough, that's going to be me, because I'm not going to worship the image of the beast. Every time I read that, I always thought of television, you know? And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let he that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Six, six, six. Sorry, Roman government did not do this in 70 A.D., contrary to the liars of the preterists. Okay? I mean, do you have to have a mark on your hand to buy anything right now? Right now. This is April 15, 2017. No. The answer is no. So this hasn't been fulfilled. You know, I have no respect for preterists. I really don't. They're either ignorant of the Bible, which means they don't know what they're talking about, Yes, parts of Matthew 24 were fulfilled in 70 A.D., but the book of Revelation has not. So, keep an eye out, people. Temple's coming. All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen.